Okay, so now I'm quickly going to show you how we can use um, structures in a function. Um, so I saved the airfoil data actually in a, in, a, in a map file, a data file called APS input deck. So if I double click that and load up the data that I saved, so there's a, there are the two airfoils. I also noticed that I actually entered in some data incorrectly. Uh, the C algebra to Canberra actually, rather than entering it in as a as a number, as a value, I accidentally entered it as a string. So I'm just going to change that now. I can do that through this as well. Okay, 0.3. Okay, so make sure you've you've got numeric values in, and you know the difference between a numeric value and a string. Um, I accidentally put inverted commas. Um, Bit before and after the 0 0.2 when I was doing it in the last tutorial, so tutorial video, so just be careful of that. Okay, so I'm going to save um, my map file again just so it's saved the changes. Okay, that's done. Okay, so now I'm going to use the um, these two um, bits of information, these two informations pertaining to these two. Um, Airfoils by creating a function. Okay, so the function I'm going to create is just a calculator for lift coefficient. Okay, so call it get CL, call it 2D, and it's going to take as inputs, it's going to take my airfoil. Okay, so I can put in any of any of the airfoils into here. Um, so that means because that's a structure, I know that that's a structure. If I put that as an input, it's going to take all of the data in that particular structure into the function. So you'd have to write individual uh, variable names in your function. So your function stays nice and small and neat. Okay. Um, so what else do I want? I want an angle of attack. So I want CL to be as a function of angle of attack. So I'm going to put alpha here. There's another input, so there's just two inputs into this function, the airfoil that we want to evaluate and the angle of attack that we want to find the CL at. Okay, so um, I know that my CL equation looks something like this, CL equals lift curve slope, okay, A naught times some angle of attack plus CL due to camber. But where is MATLAB going to get those values from? For it's got alpha. It's got alpha. Actually, we'd need to put since it's using that input and that inputs in degrees. We'd have to convert that into radians. So 180 divided by pi. Um, but MATLAB doesn't know where to find currently a naught and CL due to camber. But we know that A0 is in our um, aerofoil, my aerofoil structure. So we can point it towards that. And the neat thing about structures is the location of that or the address of that variable is the same for every airfoil, aerofoil that you have in your database. So you don't have to necessarily um specify within that lift curve slope variable that you're wanting to use the 2412 uh, lift curve slope or the or different aerofoils lift curve slope you just put in the name of the variable so let's do that for cl camber as well my aerofoil cl camber okay um So there's a, looks like there's a, yeah. It's going to be there, isn't it? Okay. So yeah, make sure your parentheses are all matching. Okay, so there's nothing underlined, so everything's being used. The function looks fine. If I save it, it automatically saves as the name of the function, get cl 2 d Okay, that goes into my working directory, so I can use it now. Um, and if I 
go into my works. Whoops, my um, command line, command window. I can try and use this function now. Two D. Now we need to tell it which aerofoil in the structure we want to use. Okay, so we just say my aerofoil. And I'm going to say, I would like you to use the first one, please. I'm going to put the number one in there. And I'm going to want it to evaluate at a, a, an angle of attack of five degrees. Okay, so press enter and voila, it, it works. Okay, so all I've had to input there is, this, is the structure itself. And the rest is done within the function. As long as when you're writing that function, you know what variable names are in that structure, then you're in business. Okay, let's just to test it out, let's try it on the other aerofoil, so in the second aerofoil. So put in number two there, and we get, surprise, surprise, a different uh, lift coefficient. Um, if we're really clever, we could actually produce an array of CLs. So if we produce um, an array of angles of attack between, let's say, north and um, 10. I want to do 10 of them, or 11 of them. Okay, that's um, produce a lin space. That's that's 11 angles of attack in degrees. Okay, I want to I want to evaluate CL at each of those. So I can apply. I can use the function on all of those. So CL equals Hoping this is going to work now. Alpha colon. Boom. Okay, so we have an array of CLs now for all of those different alphas on Aerofoil 2. So I'm going to rename that actually CL. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to rename it. Now I'm going to give my CL. I'm going to do a second column of CLs. But I'm going to use aerofoil one. Okay, so now I've got the CLs for one aerofoil and CLs for another aerofoil. And we can plot those and let's see how these two CL versus alphas compare for each aerofoil. So plot alpha. Um, Versus CL. Okay, so plotting the X values and the Y values. Um, there's my plot. Okay, oh, I've still got the old plot. On. Let's get rid of that. Let's do that again. Okay, there it is. Hold on. Now let's plot. The other CL values. Okay, and we get both curves. Okay, so slightly different gradients and different y intercepts, but they're the two different lift curve slopes for the two different airfoils. All right, so that's pretty, pretty neat, I'd say. Okay, that's it.